there is nothing better than reading a good book, cuddled under a blanket, maybe with a candle or two burning, maybe with a cat or two snuggling during the autumn season. It is my favorite activity by far through the colder months, and I wanted to make sure to share a bunch of recommendations for books in different categories that all deliver even extra on the autumnal vibes, and I've split them into a couple different categories for different types of readers. And the first category is cozy. Cozy books and autumn go together like I was going to say peanut butter and jelly, but I actually don't like peanut butter. Controversial, I know. Like me and cats. <laughs> my first recommendation is a Canadian classic and one of my favorite childhood books, Anne of Green Gables. Following Anne, who is an orphan who has come to live with a new family, as she learns who she is and forges deep relationships, it is so wholesome and funny and sweet and silly and lovely and... It's amazing. Specifically, the first book gives me so many autumnal vibes, even though it does cycle through seasons. I feel like Anne Shirley was the original basic fall bit. If she lived today, she would be obsessed with pumpkin spice lattes. If somehow you have managed to live your entire life so far without reading this book, please go read it, especially in fall. You will not regret it. While we're on the subject of Ellen Montgomery, I have another one of her books that is perfect for fall, and that is the Blue Castle. This is a book that I read more recently, I think last year, and it's amazing. Again, it's a book that sort of cycles through the season, so you will see summer and fall and winter and spring, but something about Ella Montgomery's writing, she is very nature forward. She has these beautiful descriptions of the flora and fauna and of just the aesthetic of different seasons, especially in more wild Canadian landscapes. It's absolutely gorgeous to read. It immediately became a new all-time favorite when I read it, and I am considering rereading this along with Anne of Green Gables this season because they're just so perfect for this time of year. Lancy is a character who has never been in love. She isn't married at 29, which makes her an old maid in the time she lives in. But, and she just has this moment where she realizes she doesn't necessarily have to live her entire life the way she has been living it and takes agency over her life in a really gorgeous way as she grows into the full version of herself. And it's just again, so wholesome, so lovely, quite funny and witty from time to time. Just so good and very much has those fall, cozy, read it by firelight sort of vibes. My next recommendation is Cozy Fantasy and it will shock no one. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. This book is so cozy. It is the epitome of a fall read. Legends and Lattes follows our protagonist Viv, who is an orc, who has decided to leave her sort of dangerous, adventurous life behind to open a coffee shop. And this story is a really slow-paced, beautiful tale of found family and figuring out where you belong. The relationships, both platonic and romantic in this book, are so heartwarming. I adore them. And if you're a fan of coffee or baked goods like croissants, you're going Going to adore this book because the descriptions of coffee and lattes and freshly baked pastries is just delectable. Both times I read this, my mouth was watering the entire time. It's incredible, absolutely perfect for this time of year. I'd even recommend it for those who aren't necessarily usually fantasy readers. I think it can sort of cross genres quite easily. It's not super high fantasy. It's just a really, really beautiful story. It makes me cry with happiness and sadness and then happiness again. It's beautiful and perfect, so perfect for this time of year. My next recommendation I listen to on audiobook, and it's another cozy fantasy, and that is The Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is another one that I think would work for people who don't necessarily usually dip their toe into the world of witches and magic. This story is, again, super wholesome, found family, once again has really beautiful platonic and romantic relationship building. Our protagonist is sort of at a crossroads in her life and looking for a place to belong and sort of a purpose, and the this book is kind of the process of her finding a place where she thinks maybe she might be able to belong. It's really lovely. I would highly recommend. The next book on this list is a little bit of a weird pick, maybe, <laughs> but I would recommend The Empress of Salt and Fortune by Nevo. The book definitely covers some more difficult topics and there's a little bit of violence, but it does have a very slow paced, sort of atmospheric, almost fairy tale quality to it. And just the structure of the novel, the protagonist has traveled to a more remote area to speak to someone to record their history. And so you sort of flip between the modern day of our protagonist getting to know this person 
that they've traveled to visit. And then you also get little snippets, little vignettes of her younger years, her epic life. And something about this sort of like sitting around sharing stories and the like little in-between bits in the modern period are just super cozy, very much give me autumnal vibes. And the book in general is just fantastic. I would highly recommend it at any time of year, but I do think it sort of fits in with this cozy cuddle up with some tea and a candle burning sort of autumn reading aesthetic. My next recommendation is for my romance lovers out there. That Could Be Enough by Alyssa Cole. This is a sapphic romance between two independent Black women in the time period that Alexander Hamilton was alive, and it's a really beautiful book. It's so well written. The writing is just poetic and heartbreaking and gorgeous. The romance itself is so lovely and romantic and sweet and heartbreaking and all of the things that you want out of a historical romance, in my opinion. Maybe it's just because of the historical setting, I don't know, but it 100% gives me autumnal vibes. So if you're looking for a sapphic romance written by a Black author about Black characters, that could be enough does not get nearly as much attention as it deserves. Another book that has a little bit more cozy vibes, to me anyway, is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is not a book for everyone. If you need plot to be driving your stories, you're probably not going to enjoy this one. But if you enjoy reading books on vibes and vibes alone, beautiful writing, interesting characters, and an atmosphere to die for, that is what The Starless Sea delivers. My last couple recommendations are some more classics that I feel are perfect for autumn. Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I just adore Little Women. It's a story about four sisters, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, and their experience growing from little girls basically into little women and their sibling dynamics, their relationships with their neighbors and their family, and sort of sorting out what they want to do with their lives and what their future will hold. It is so wholesome and cozy and lovely and wonderful and definitely a book that's perfect to read at the end of fall, sort of on the cusp of winter or even going up towards the holiday season. Another classic recommendation. This is one that I listened to on audiobook as a child, actually on a cassette tape, because I'm old. I listened to it about a million times and I absolutely love this story, but that is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I assume most people are at least aware of or slightly familiar with The Secret Garden in passing, but The Secret Garden is a really beautiful story, essentially about two children who have had difficult, sad lives in different ways, finding each other and finding solace in each other. It's really a book about human connection and love, but the setting is this goth thick manor and a secret garden hidden behind tall walls and the mystery of what is hidden within those walls. And this is a book that I would specifically listen to over and over again in the fall and early winter. I think it's perfect for this time of year. And if you haven't read this story, I would highly recommend it. And my last cozy recommendation I have a beautiful vintage copy of that was my mother's, and that is The Hobbit. The Hobbit is essentially a prequel to Lord of the Rings. So if you're familiar with Lord of the Rings but haven't read or seen a film version of The Hobbit, I would highly recommend it. This is another one I listened to on tape as a kid about a million times. Again, it's fantasy, very much has cozy vibes, has lovely vivid characters. You travel to so many different places. It really has an atmospheric magical, whimsical quality to it. I love it. I love, love, love The Hobbit so much, and I think it's perfect for fall. So that is my last cozy recommendation. Moving into my next category of recommendations, which are melancholic. These are books that are just a little sadder, just a little darker, maybe, than the books in the last category, but still perfect for autumn. My first recommendation in this category is Lost in the Moment and Found by Shawnee McGuire. This is a novella in the Wayward Children series. It's later in the series, but you don't necessarily have to have read the earlier books in the series to read this one. This is a story about a protagonist who is a young girl in a dangerous home situation who escapes and finds a magical door. And when she goes through, she finds 
things that she never could have imagined possible. I would highly recommend looking into trigger warnings for this. The beginning of the book especially talks about some really difficult, dark, upsetting subject matter, so definitely check out trigger warnings, but it's a short read. It is very atmospheric, sort of old dusty things on shelves and magical doors that open to worlds that you've never seen and really beautiful, very touching, um, a difficult read, but gorgeous and definitely gives me fall vibes. My next recommendation is a book that I didn't necessarily love reading see my dark academia reading vlog from last year if you want to see my reaction but I do think it is perfect for fall and I know some people love this book more than I do and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This was a three-star read for me. Most of the books I'm recommending in this video are five stars or at the very least four stars but I felt like I had to include it because it is just so perfect for autumn and I don't regret reading it. I found it fascinating. There were some things I really liked about it. The characters were just awful people so just keep that in mind. <laughs> oh yeah and it's not a romance. Don't let anyone tell you different. It's really not a romance. <laughs> this is a story about two very broken people who hurt other people because they're hurt, you know, and very toxic relationships all on this really sort of cold, barren, unforgiving landscape, very atmospheric and dark and dramatic. I would recommend reading it if you haven't checked it out. Just go into it knowing that the main characters are not likable and you're not going to be rooting for their romance because it's not romantic. But it's definitely very, very melancholic and perfect for autumn. My next recommendation I listened to on audiobook but it was a five-star read and that was Sorrowland by River Solomon. I'm a huge River Solomon fan and Sorrowland is probably my favorite of their work. This is a book about a woman who was raised in a cult who is going through a bit of a transformation both internally and externally. It is really hard to describe. It has a little bit of a sort of fantastical magical quality to it. It is very sort of dark and sad and melancholic in its tone and I would definitely recommend recommend checking out some trigger warnings if you're going to read this one because it does have a couple things in there that I think you might want to be aware of going into it but I just thought it was gorgeous. I loved it. It's strange and dark and sad but also beautiful and completely engrossing. The next melancholic book I wanted to recommend is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. This is a very sad story about a boy and his relationship with his mother and their relationship is incredibly complicated and abusive in many ways. It's heartbreaking and upsetting and difficult to read but also touching and beautiful and devastating in a good way. So gorgeously written and also the main character is sort of exploring their sexuality and coming to terms with being gay, experiencing racism, living in America. It's just, oh god, it's so beautiful. <laughs> I just, I love this book. I think it's gorgeous and I do think it is absolutely perfect for this time of year if you're looking for something that will break your heart in the best way. My next recommendation is another fantasy recommendation. This one is a little bit more high fantasy, though probably not in the way that you think of when you think of high fantasy, <laughs> but it is a little bit more intensive in the world building and magic system, the socio-political climate of the book. It is also possibly my favorite, if not my absolute favorite fantasy series of all time from one of my favorite authors of all time, and that is The Fifth Season or The Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. This is such a fantastic trilogy. It is very intense and upsetting at times. 100% look up trigger warnings if you're thinking about reading this. Some of the content is really hard to read. But N.K. Jemisin is an incredible writer. It is beautifully written. The characters feel so real. Their relationships are incredibly complicated and deep and layered and flawed. The world is so well drawn. You really feel like this is a world that exists and you really understand the dynamics at play. And I love that the protagonist is an older woman. She's a mother. She is more mature. She's seen things. <laughs> She's been through some shit and she'll continue to go through some shit. But it's so beautifully written. It is incredibly unique. It is very much in a world of its own when it comes to fantasy, in my opinion. And if you are a fan of fantasy and you haven't read any N.K. Jemisin and you haven't read this series in particular, what are you doing? Because it is amazing. Another one that you've probably heard of if you haven't read it is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is the story of Addie who makes a deal with the devil to live an immortal life. And the cost of her immortal life is that no one will remember her. And she goes through different places in different times and slowly learns that 
living a life without human connection is not worth living at all. I thought it was beautifully written. I really adored this book. This is another one that has sort of a mixed reaction where some people really don't like this book and some people absolutely adore it. This book is really perfect for autumn. It has all the autumnal aesthetics you could want, in my opinion. Really perfect for this time of year and definitely has a little bit more of a slow, sad, melancholic, lonely quality to it. My final melancholic recommendations are two books by the same author, Madeline Miller, and those books are Song of Achilles and Circe. They're retellings of the myths focusing on characters from Homer's The Odyssey and the Iliad. A Song of Achilles has a little bit less of an autumnal vibe, I would say. It's probably more, a little bit more of a spring-summer vibe just because of the setting, but Circe for me definitely has more of an autumnal vibe. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more, again, sort of lonely and quiet and reflective. Both are gorgeous. Both could be great reads for this time of year, but Circe especially, I think, has autumnal vibes in spades, and Madeline Miller has just a way with words. The writing is gorgeous. They are very, very immersive, especially with Circe. I sort of got drawn into the book to the extent that I was reading through the night and almost felt like I was in the book instead of in real life. <laughs> That's how immersive it was. So highly recommend if you have a weekend to cuddle up and really get drawn into the mythos of these characters. They're great. The next category I'm going to get into is so quintessentially autumn, and that is dark academia. I'm going to try to go faster through this one because I imagine that you will already be familiar with many of these, but I couldn't make this video without including them. So The Secret History by Donna Tartt, arguably the book that started dark academia as a thing. It's in an Ivy League setting with incredibly pretentious, wealthy, intellectual characters that are deeply flawed and unlikable, yet fascinating. And there's also murder. Very autumnal vibes very good. Another one in the same vein is If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. This is another favorite of mine, and it specifically focuses on students who are studying theater, Shakespeare to be exact, and again, sort of pretentiousness, higher learning, maybe a little bit of death. <laughs> What more could you want? A Dark Academia recommendation that gets into the fantasy area with some magic is The Atlas Six. Once again, very flawed, complex, not always so likable characters that are very well drawn in an academic setting with a dark vibe. In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This is another one that's a bit of an Ivy League university setting with flawed, complex, not always so likable characters with a murder. Very entertaining, very dark, very autumnal. Babel by R.F. Kuang. If you haven't heard of this book. I don't know where you've been for the last couple years. This is another example of dark academia that is fantasy-based with a magic system, and it's all about looking at colonialism through a linguistic lens. Very interesting concept. Vita Nostra is another one that leans into the sort of magical, fantastical realm, although I'd say this one leans a little bit more towards weird lit than traditional fantasy. Again, it's a school setting. It has a very dark, mysterious atmosphere, similar to Sorrowland in a way. There's a bit of an internal and external transformation that can't necessarily be described. And I think this one is a very unique, very interesting concept that was very well executed. The Book Eaters is another more sort of fantasy take, though it's a little bit more of an urban fantasy feeling. Again, we have an older protagonist in this one who is a mother, and it's really a about the princess in the tower saving herself, and she is doing everything she can to protect her son, who was born with a condition that makes him have to feed on human minds rather than books like she does. And that's where the dark sort of murderous quality comes in with this one. And although it isn't set in a school, it is all about characters who are, you know, not human, and they have to eat books to survive. So it does still have sort of that literary quality to it. Another Dark Academia recommendation that doesn't take place in an academic setting but has a very heavy book or literary focus is The Shadow of the Wind. This is another one that has such strong, intense atmosphere and vibes. It takes place in 1940s Barcelona, and it really features this mysterious character of an author who no one has ever seen, whose books have all been destroyed in a fire except for one that our young protagonist finds. And it's really beautiful, very dark and mysterious, and definitely, for me, falls into dark academia and also is the perfect book to read during autumn. 
Another one that's not explicitly in a school setting, but still for me fits into that sort of dark academia feeling is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. This one is similar to The Starless Sea in many ways of being less about the plot and more about the concept and the characters and the atmosphere and the vibe. And I really, really loved this book. I thought it was fantastic and would definitely recommend it for the atmosphere and the vibes alone. The next section is nonfiction. I have three nonfiction recommendations that I think are really good for this time of year. Entangled Life, Braiding Sweetgrass, and Vesper Flights. All three of these have gorgeous prose, which is something that to me definitely lends itself toward the autumn season. Really lyrical, beautiful writing, especially about the natural world when it comes to nonfiction, for me just feels perfectly autumnal. So Entangled Life is all about fungi. It's fascinating, but it's also really beautifully written. There's a very strong sense of place. It's incredibly fascinating and a very immersive read for nonfiction. Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer is one of my favorite books, maybe ever. Gorgeous exploration of the sort of intersection of Indigenous wisdom and Western ecology or the study of ecosystems. Kimmerer explores the ways that we as the Western world can learn from Indigenous wisdom and the ways that we bulldozed over what already existed and took for granted the depth and breadth of Indigenous wisdom to replace it with more scientific ways of doing things that are actually destroying our ecosystems. And she really advocates for a return back to many Indigenous ways that are more holistic in their ability to support the entire ecosystem from top to bottom and bottom to top. Also very beautifully written, very touching. There are many people included in this that I grew very attached to. Vesper Flights is a collection of essays about birds, and I was not really sure what to expect when I went into it, but I found it absolutely gorgeous. It's very poetic, very atmospheric, and again, something about nonfiction that is really about scientific observation of the natural world gives me very autumnal vibes. And the final category of recommendations I want to share are creepy, spooky, or scary reads for the Halloween season. So I did make a video recommending 30 plus spooky books last year. So I'll link that video in the cards and in the description box so you can watch that for 30 more creepy, spooky recommendations. That one I split into a bunch of different categories as well, like witches, paranormal, weird books, etc. But I do have some more books that I've read since that video that I want to recommend. Wild Spaces by S.L. Coney. This is a book that I read relatively recently. I think I read it last month and it really blew me away. I thought it was gorgeous. It has a bit of a monstrous transformation quality to it, but it very much has a sort of literary horror quality to it and it's heartbreaking and beautiful and I highly recommend. Monstrillo is another more recent read, monster fiction, that is about grief and family and coming of age. And it's heartbreaking and beautiful and painful and gruesome and gorgeously written. And it's an amazing book, honestly. I thought it was unlike anything I've ever read and very much has a sort of creepy monster fiction feeling to it. But again, more of a literary horror vibe. Another book that I would classify as literary horror is The Vegetarian by Han Kang. This one again has a bit of a transformation and very much a darker subject matter. But again, it focuses on some really complex, fascinating characters and relationships and is heartbreaking and beautiful. To continue on with sort of literary horror, I would recommend Such Small Hands. I believe this is a novella, if I'm remembering correctly, and it's based on a real horrific event that involved child-on-child -child violence. It's a very disturbing, unsettling, eerie read, but again, written in a sort of more poetic, literary way. One last recommendation that I would sort of put into literary horror is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. This is a series of fairy tale retellings and they all have a sort of dark feminist bent to them. There's violence and blood and gore, but there's also a lot of social commentary and exploration of gender dynamics and the experience of being a woman. Just a fantastic collection. Gallant. This is young adult fantasy, but it doesn't really feel like YA fantasy except that the main character is a young teenager. But this story is very dark, very eerie and menacing. Once again, we have flawed characters and complex relationships, loss, death, some sort of 
monstrous and potentially sort of supernatural elements involved. I was really, really pleasantly surprised by this and absolutely loved it. So I would highly recommend it. And I do think that this is perfect for fall and Halloween season. I have a little mini vampire section, House of Hunger. This was a really fantastic take on vampire fiction inspired by Elizabeth Bathory, but taken to a little bit of a more fantastical place. It's sapphic, it's dark, it's gory, and I really enjoyed it. Dracula, of course, is a classic for a reason. I was actually really blown away by how much I loved Dracula when I read it. I also found myself laughing way more than I expected to. It's quite funny. Again, perfect to read near Halloween if you haven't read Dracula yet. I think you might be pleasantly surprised. This last one is not technically vampire fiction, but it's sort of a vampire adjacent because our protagonist is a cannibal, <laughs> and that is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers. This one's very irreverent and over the top. Our protagonist is a food critic, and she's very pretentious, also a murderer and a cannibal, and it's a little bit ridiculous and very gory, but also kind of fantastic. Our protagonist is so completely unhinged in kind of a fun way, <laughs> sort of kind of partially almost vampire-esque. Of course, there are some classics that are perfect for this time of year. Something like The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. It's super short. Gothic, paranormal, quite creepy, unreliable narrator, definitely perfect to read around Halloween. There's also the entire world of classic mystery like Agatha Christie. I've only read And Then There Were None and The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, but I really enjoyed both of them. And of course, Agatha Christie was incredibly prolific, so there are many, many, many <laughs> Agatha Christie mysteries that you could read during the fall season. And that brings me to the end of my recommendations. I didn't actually count how many I was recommending here, but I feel like there were quite a few there and many different genres and feelings, even though, again, for me, they all very much have an autumnal vibe to them in one way or the other. So hopefully at least one of these piqued your interest. Let me know in the comments if you're planning on reading any of these based on my recommendation. I would love to know which ones sort of jumped out at you. And of course, if you have recommendations for me, if there are books that you haven't seen me talk about that you feel have a really strong autumnal feeling, please leave them down below in the comments for me, selfishly, because I want <laughs> to read more books that have an autumnal feeling, but also for everyone else watching this video so they can get even more recommendations. Okay, bye.